Yes, people, welcome back to the 1894. I'm Hugh and I've got Dara here with me as always for this Champions League semi-final second leg preview. City versus PSG. We are currently, as it stands, 19 minutes away from a place in the Champions League final. A chance to make history. Let's get into our thoughts. Okay, so we're going to get into our thoughts in the game. Usually we do our predicted 11 first, but we'll get into that in the second segment of the video. So stick with us for that. But right now we're going to talk about how we think we can maybe improve or how we think we're going to win the game. So secondhalf.com, second half FC. That has been us in recent weeks. I think you'll agree with me on that, right? In recent weeks, particularly the Dortmund game, definitely the Leeds game that we lost, the Villa game, um, and even the one just there in the weekend against Palace. And, of course, the PSG game that was the big one. We were very much second half FC, okay? We look like a completely different team. I said I said it a few times on live stream. Is it our, our halftime team talks? Do we just kick it to gear? Are we showing more character? Or is it a combination of so many things? I really don't know. But um, my personal opinion on this second leg is now PSG are going to come all guns blazing from the very start. And we've obviously, we've obviously got rumours that Mbappe is not fit and he may, he may not play. He will play, right? He will play. He's killing Mbappe. If, if they have to inject him with all sorts of painkillers, they will, and they'll put him out in the pitch. This is their Champions League semi final as well. Do you know what I mean? They want to win it just as much as we do, and he is obviously a massive goal threat. So they'll come out all guns blazing in the first half and try to catch us early and make it a real game once again. But how do you think, Dara, we can um, maybe prevent that from happening or be less of a second half team? Because I think at this stage of the competition, you're kind of riding your luck on, on just basing yourself on being a second half team. You need to be good for the whole 90 minutes. So, so what are your thoughts on that? I mean, there's one, there's one standout factor on what we should do with Star Fernandinho for me personally. You know, he, I think he's always more weight than Rodri, even at, especially at the start of the game. I think for Rodri, once he gets a feel for the game, he comes into a bit more. But uh, Fernandinho is always just there. I think he'd be better at breaking down the counter-attacks. He won't give away the ball nearly as much as Rodri did. And, you know, if, if it was me picking the team, I'd have Fernandinho in there. And he came off at the weekend as well. I think came off about 25 minutes ago for Zinchenko. So I think I think it gets started because he was uh, brought off and Roger was left on personally. I'm kind of on the fence about the defensive midfielder position because, yeah, I agree with you that Fernandinho probably offers a bit more defensively. Like He's more of a traditional defensive midfielder, isn't he? Like He'll break up their attacks. Um, we've seen him do it in recent weeks, Fernandinho as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if he does start. But then if you take out Rodri, I know he's been, he's been very much the second half FC himself personally he's um, been poor in the first half of the game particularly the PSG game I know some people have got mixed opinions on that people say he was decent in the first half but lads I thought he was awful in the first half I'm going to be fully real with you you know the things he does well he, he wasn't doing at all you know he was he, like his, his biggest asset is his possession retaining his possession retention he wasn't doing that at all he was losing the ball he wasn't breaking up attacks and basically because of him we had no midfield presence and PSG were able to transition from defense to attack within seconds Fernandinho doesn't allow that, and we've seen that on many occasions. Yes, he could pick himself up a yellow card, um, pick himself up a yellow card against us, sent off, whatever. But he doesn't. He, do, he probably doesn't offer as much um, on the offense as as Rodri would, even though he's not bad in that front. So um, I think it's just what Pep thinks. How's Rodri training, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but I, th I, I think I'd be happy with it. But we'll talk about the defense. Obviously, John Stones was on media duty today. He seems confident. He's looking forward to the game. Pep was saying he hopes Mbappe plays. I hope Mbappe plays too because, you know, when if we do knock them out, then it's a case of we beat them with their full team, um, injured or not. So what are you expecting from the defence? Obviously, Cancelo played last week, didn't have his best game. Zincheco came on, played really well. Walker was phenomenal last week. And then Stones and Diaz. Is it a case of same again or any improvements? Uh, yes, same, same again. Well, second half team again, you know, let Zinchenko start, play a bit wider, left out and took inside. It's the same system that went there and battered them. And I don't care. They battered them in the second half that you did against Paris. We battered them. And, you know, I don't see why, why we don't just play that second half team. Maybe even if Rodri's in there, he's in there. Again, you said you don't mind. I don't mind either. But it's, I think Zinchenko has to start. He came on, he changed everything. He left Foden, took in and did what he wanted. I think he has to play. I don't, I don't know why he'd start Cancelo after that game. Especially, even though Cancelo's a very good player, had a very good season, Zinchenko's just... For this game, especially, he's more defensively sound. Uh, I'd want him in. I, I do, I do, I do agree one hundred percent. He did change the game for us last week. He did give players like Foden and and the, the other winger Mares and De Bruyne as well mm -hmm. the chance to do more what they wanted because Cancelo wasn't there in the middle of the park. It was Zinchenko's playing more of a traditional left back role. But Zinchenko, in my opinion, has to be rewarded with this game. Obviously, through good performance as well last week. But if you look at his whole season in general so far this year, um. He's been really good. He's been really good. And I know we, we drum this narrative that he's not a left back and we need a left back in. I don't think we do anymore. I think we have a perfectly good left back in Zinchenko and then obviously someone to rotate him with in Cancelo who can obviously play on the right as well. So 
I, I don't think we do need a left back, and I do agree Zinchenko um, should be there. Um, and I think you have to give credit to the whole defence, um, even when Cancelo was on last week, because I think without their fantastic performance, we could have been 2 or 3 nil down at half-time. Um, players like Stones and Diaz, um, even though even though PSG didn't have, have too many clear-cut chances, it was just the composure and the quality of Diaz and Stones kind of oozed throughout the rest of the team. And that's priceless. You know, when you have that kind of Rolls-Royce centre-half like Diaz, he's going to make the midfielders, who are probably having an off game in the first half anyway, feel a bit more comfortable and give them that bit of uh, sort of relief to get themselves into the game. So you have to put a huge amount of credit down to last week's performance or down on last week's performance down to the defence. But we'll move on to the attack. Um, the attack last week, they did struggle in the first half, similar to the midfield. Like, that's why I keep putting emphasis on the defence. They were so good. but Nevertheless, we do have so much quality there. Real Maris has been absolutely battering fullbacks for weeks now. So, like, we'll talk about that in the predicted 11 now in the next segment. But I think if we're going to win this tie, I do think we're going to have to score in the Etihad. I do think PSG will score at least once. I think we're going to have to score then, of course, to, to go through. It'll be a tight game. They have the firepower of PSG, and so do we. Um, I think if we are to, to win the tie overall, our attack are going to have to be on form in the first half as well as the second. We can't keep riding our luck like we did in the Dortmund games and in the PSG first leg where we're like, we'll, put, we'll get some moments of luck or, or class in the second half. It doesn't always happen like that. So we need players like Foden, who maybe wasn't at his overall best, was still good, not his overall best though, against PSG. And De Bruyne, who I thought, even though he wasn't, I know he got that bit of luck for his goal, but he probably isn't having his best uh, match last week. He was still contributing through leadership and character, and he's driving players on. You can see he's really determined. Then, of course, the quality of Mahrez. What do you think on, on that kind of point, what I mean by playing well and, and being good and showing your class for the full 90 minutes rather than just the second half? Yeah, no, it, ha- it has to be the way, because like you said, they'll probably score. I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the camp that they'll score. But to, for us to go through, we're going to have to be there for 90 minutes. We can't just show up for 45 minutes again. And get what like I I think we you you two said on the review that it was the two goals we got especially the first one were a bit kind of a bit on the lucky side with the cross and also I think um we're gonna have to be there for ninety minutes because that stuff's not gonna happen again we're gonna have to show our class we can't just not look away because the second call was good but we can't ride our look like we did in that first leg we're gonna have to be there in ninety minutes and yeah I think I I'd go with same tape again though. I agree, mate. I'm definitely in the camp like yourself that PSG will score. Um, and like I keep saying, and I've said this in all our watch longs and all our previews and reviews for Champions League games, you do need that bit of luck, but you can't bank on it. And we're in a fortunate position as a, as a as fans of this team that we have a fantastic team full of so much depth and quality. So I, I don't see why we can't do the job. But listen, let's talk about what players we wanted to see on the pitch tomorrow. So we'll get into our predicted 11 now. Okay, so our predicted 11 for the second leg against PSG. As always, we're not in the know. We're just kind of ballparking as to who we think will play, who we would like to see play. So in next, we've gone for Ederson. He's the best in the business right now, in my opinion. Obviously, you've got Zach Stefan, who's decent. Scott Carson, who's really good as well. But Ederson is um, he's a start for these games. I don't think there's any debate there. The center halves, Stones and Diaz. We know Stones is playing based on media duties this morning. And Diaz, who is he's just the Rolls Royce of the Premier League center half at the, at the moment. So... Great partnership there. Full trust in them after how they played last week. Kyle Walker, who was our man of the match last week, we think he'll start right back as well. We gave him man of the match because he kept Mbappe quiet when he needed to. He went forward when he needed to. He was just really good overall, a really good performance. In the left-back position, we've taken Cancelo out and rewarded Zinchenko because we thought he was really good when he came on. And every time he's played really this season, he's been at least a 7, 8 out of 10. That's kind of just the, the cliche terms that he fans seem to be using, and it's fair. I think it's a fair analysis. Zinchenko, he's been really good when he's called upon. Considering he's not a left back, he is a left back. He's a left back now. He's really, really good. And I think he will contribute just as well this week as he did last week. Dara, any thoughts on this back four and the goalkeeper? Anything you, you expect from them or no, you you've said you've said my piece on it there. We said it before the video as well. It's just it, it that's how it should be. It's that how it should be. Absolutely. I have full faith that this back four can at least do a, a good job at nullifying um the PSG attack based jump based just off watching what we saw last week. So in defensive midfield, basically all we're asking for is not a double pivot. We don't want Fernandinho and Rodri to play together. Um, but we're happy to see either start. We just think it'll be Fernandinho based off the fact that he didn't play the whole game against Palace <laughs> on the weekend. And he's probably a team a bit more defensively sound than Rodri, even though Rodri's slightly more um slightly more suitable to going forward. But just on the basis of we don't want to give away away goals on this occasion. I think Pep might choose Fernandinho, but we're happy with either or. We just don't want to see 
together basically but yes Fernandinho for us on this occasion midfield par partnership Gundogan and Bernardo Bernardo was probably our best player in the first half last week in the first leg and um, I always say if you're a regular here the Duracell bunny you guys know the term he has that constant energy that endless tank of of energy that he will keep pressing the PSG back for and that's what we need tomorrow night we need players to just keep putting them under pressure force them to make mistakes and we will get our rewards Gundogan is he, he's just Gundogan isn't he been fantastic this season He's a Rolls Royce midfielder. I love that term and I only use it when I feel it's necessary. He really controls the pace of the game. He's great at calming situations down when we're a bit flustered. And I think if Fernandinho, Rodri, or Fernandinho, Bernardo, and Gundogan, if they as a midfield unit can just do all their individual jobs correctly, we should have a bit more control of the whole midfield space in general than we had last week, definitely in the first half. Um, any thoughts on that midfield? No, I think it's perfect. You know, Gundogan, he moves in silence. He does whatever he has to do. He controls the pace of the game. He links up with the Brian, links up the wingers. It's I, I don't see a world where he doesn't start personally. And uh, why, why shouldn't he start? The, I thought he was pretty good against Paris. Wasn't his best game, pretty good against Paris still. Uh, he was rested against Palace. Of course, of course he starts. I think it was a fairly straightforward prediction and um, this yeah. whole starting 11 in total, maybe bar one or two positions, based purely on the fact that so many of these key players did not play against Palace in the weekend. But anyway, moving up to our front three, we've got Foden on the left, De Bruyne and false nine, as I'm sure you guessed, and Mars on the right wing. I think that front three speaks for itself. It kind of selects itself. There are our three best front three players at the moment based on current form and contributions. So Foden, who didn't maybe have his best game against PSG, you can't not put him in. He has been better than Sterling this season. Um, and, and he also obviously has that moment of magic within that he can pull something out of the bag and do something crazy. He's just a classy, classy player, and I think he will contribute heavily tomorrow night. I think he want to you know, prove a point to the world that I am good enough to be on this stage. I'm good enough to be playing against the players like Mbappe and Neymar. I want to be in that category of players, and he certainly can, and what a time to do so. De Bruyne and Mahrez both got a bit of luck with their goals last week, but De Bruyne deserved it, and so did Mahrez, actually, I think. But on the, on the De Bruyne point, I think he deserved it because he was really pushing. He was really pushing the team. When we were looking like we could possibly ship two or three and go in at halftime with, a, with an awful deficit and then the tie's over that stage already, he was leading the players. He was trying to make things happen. Granted, things weren't happening for him all the time, but he, he was pushing. and he's, got, he's, he's really growing to this captain's role, and I have no doubt that when Fernandino does decide to leave the club... Uh, KDB will do a fine job at captain. And then, of course, Maris too, got a bit of luck. He's been absolutely tearing up the fullbacks, like I said recently um, in, our, in, our, in our first segment of the show. He, you can't not start him either. But I think we'll talk about um, the players that didn't get into this team for a second, Dara, because there is a possible, possible shout to play Aguero um, as a striker. Considering he scored, he did score a very good goal against Palace. We, it was kind of like a vintage Aguero moment, you know what I mean? A kind of a, a one-two step and bang, it's in the back of the net. We were crying out for that in the watch long players, just thump it up the keeper, or thump it on target, and it's only a matter of time before one or two goes in. But I don't know. I mean, what what do you think on that? Would you would you give him even a bit of time or what's your thoughts? I mean, I, I won't be able to say whether I give him a bit of time because I won't know what the what the current score is, but I wouldn't say it. like I love him. I love him to death. But it's it, this isn't a time for sentiment. Like you know, it, it's we want to win. You don't you don't play with someone who scored what one goal since the Champions League group stage. You don't. Yeah, I think I think Mar I'd agree I agree with him. you. I love him, but we just we can't do it if we want to win. We can't just say, "Oh, he scored against Palace. Let's throw him in." It's then you throw Torres and you throw anyone else, and you, it's not a time for sentiment. You have you just have to stick with what you know. You have to stick with what got you through the first leg. You have to stick with what got you through the knockout rounds. Yeah, I think I think I'd agree with you on that one. I'm just, I was just kind of throwing it in, as picking your brain because I did see some City fans saying on um, on Twitter that they wouldn't be opposed to the idea of Sergio Aguero playing against PSG. But I think we go with what we know best and what has been our strongest from three. For Alan Torres, though, he is he, he will grow into a fantastic player. You know, um, yeah, some people are saying he's one he's, he's he's either the best or the second best in terms of clinicality in front of goal. So. He's going to grow into a cracking player and he will get nights like this. But I do agree, this is our best front three. And this is probably our best starting 11, give or take Rodri and give or take Cancelo, depending on form week in, week out. But based on current form, I think the predicted 11 we have here is the best we could go for. And we want to know your thoughts. Who would you pick? Would you take any players out, put anyone in? Would you do anything crazy? Um, leave, your, leave your comments down below. You're always great for that, you guys. And then let us know what you think. So let's get over to our score predictions now, Mr. Revel. Okay, the Champions League semi final. We're 19 minutes away from a final, making history. Okay, we've never had this position before. We're 2 1 up, two way goals, but we both agreed that we think PSG will score because they do have that firepower PSG. 
what is your prediction? I know you wanted to go first. I'm going for us because I'm pretty sure we've got the same one. I'm saying 2 1, and I think we'll, we'll go 1 0 up. I think we'll yeah. go 1 0 up. I think they'll score. We'll be on the ropes for a little bit, then we'll score again. That's that's my opinion now. I, it's again, it comes down to Mbappe will start, of course, but it depends on what kind of an Mbappe will start with. You won't be 100%, but if we're getting a 60% Mbappe, it's still dangerous. But if if he's uh, if he's off the boil, there's a chance they won't score. But I don't know. I'm saying 2 1. I'm sick of it. I think you're right. I don't think there's any world where he can be 100%. If these rumoured niggles and, and, and twinges in his legs are true, bear in mind, before the first leg, we got word he had some sort of an injury as well. And he still played that game. And now he's got another one. And he will play. Let's be real, lad. He will play. So yeah. if he is, if he, if these if these injury rumours are true, he can't be 100%. But I, stu- I do still think they'll score. And I think they will score first. And they will score first. And we will be um, sitting there saying, City are about to blow this typical City. But we will come back and we will win. 3-1, because we will get one, right? We will get one, hear me out. And PSG will go, fuck, okay, they've scored. And PSG, who we saw last week, when things don't go their way, they start to crumble and lose their heads. And the space will open up, maybe even another red card. I'm just kind of predicting here, I'm a hopeless optimist. And then we will score another two, and we will see you at the game in fine fashion. And we will look back on this, City fans, as a historic occasion and, and, and a fantastic team performance. So that is our prediction. Minus 3-1 and a possible red card if it if everything goes the way I think it will and Darius is 2-1 let right. us know your score predictions down below as well we love hearing what you think it's a hard one to predict because there's so much quality on both sides but I think we'll wrap it up there on that note because it's going to be a really exciting game and of course we'll be doing a live watch along here on the channel we've got some fantastic um, views and likes and all that stuff on last week's um, the first leg watch along and we've no doubt it'll be similar again so it was a really enjoyable occasion come along if you want to be part of that and of course, I want to thank um, everyone who has subscribed. We've really grown in subscribers recently. We're on 215 odd or something at the moment. It's grown fantastic. It's a great little community. Do subscribe if you want to be a part of that. And like this video if you haven't done already. And of course, the final thing I always plug is the Discord. If you want your name on screen below, Dara there, he loves the Discord. You can join that. Link in the description. Free to join. City talk all day. Football talk all day. We have fans from everywhere coming in. Do join that if it takes your fancy. We will see you on Tuesday night for the biggest game in possibly the club's history. A watch along with myself and Dara. We'll see you then. Peace, love, and rock and roll.